Hey, hey, so as part of our Meet the Guest Experts series here, because we have our Plana annual Planapalooza planning event coming up in just a few weeks at the time that this podcast is dropping, today I am bringing on Tasha. And Tasha is the master of all things kind of DIY home improvement projects. And so many of us have things that, you know, those larger projects in our home spaces that we're wanting to either maybe do some remodeling or redecorating or whatever, but man, fitting it in can be really, really tough. So Tasha is going to be giving a deep dive training inside of the annual Planapalooza event, where she's going to be teaching her system for how they actually go about planning at the longer term, what projects they're going to be doing around their house. So I wanted to have her on today to talk through and share a couple quick tips on once you've landed on a project, what you can do to make sure that you are maximizing your time. And she's going to be breaking down a couple really, really powerful steps. One huge aha in terms of having your supplies on hand. So I'm really excited to jump in and have this conversation. Welcome to the Work-Life Harmony Podcast. I'm your host, Megan Semmerl. I'm the creator of the top program and top planner, teaching all things time management, organization, and productivity for women. I'm also a mom and wife, and just like you, I'm juggling hashtag all the things while running multiple businesses and a family. Guess what? You don't have to feel constantly overwhelmed, exhausted, and stressed out. There is another way. When you have the right systems and tools to plan and manage your time, you can live a life of harmony. This is your show to learn from me and other amazing women how to master your time, planning, and organization to skyrocket your productivity so you can have work-life harmony. If you're ready to stop feeling overwhelmed, this is the show for you. And if you're new here, I'd love to get you started with my work-life harmony assessment. All you have to do is DM me on Instagram at Megan Sumrall with the word harmony, and my team will send it right over. Hey everyone, welcome back to Work Life Harmony. I have the most amazing woman ever (laughs) with us here today. I have is I'm obsessed with absolutely everything that she does when it comes to beautifying her home. And Tasha is going to be one of the guest experts inside the upcoming Planapalooza annual planning workshop. And so I wanted to have the opportunity to have her here on the show so that we can talk about how Tasha actually plans and gets the most amazing, massive home projects done while still juggling everything else that she has going on. So (laughs) welcome to the show, Tasha. I'm so thrilled you're here. Thank you. you. It's, uh, It's an honor to be here. I think this is my second time and it's always fun to chat. Ah, Yes, it is. So for those that missed your first episode here, why don't you go ahead and just give a little background about yourself, what you do, how you actually got into this space, because this was not your original game plan in life, because I think it's (laughs) the story. Yeah. So my name is Tasha Agru. So I live in North Carolina. I, yeah, you're right. My background was, was not in home improvement and interior design. I was actually a private practice, medical malpractice defense attorney. I defended hospitals and doctors in big, messy lawsuits, but I've had a passion for interiors since I was around 10 years old. I grew up with a mom. I had a happy childhood. I always like to tell people that don't feel sorry for me, but I grew up with a mom who suffered from mental illness and her moods were very up and down and all around. And it just made things chaotic and unpredictable, especially since she was a single mom for a big chunk of time. And around the time I was 10, I was given my own room And I don't know what happened in my brain, but it's like, I suddenly understood that this room, I had control in this room to create like my happy space. I, Mm -hmm. and it just had such an effect on me because by creating this, like having this little haven that I had control over and that I could make, you know, within reason, look the way I wanted to and take care of it the way I wanted to. It gave me such a sense of peace and calm because that's where I was when I closed my eyes and went to bed every night. And that's how I woke up every morning. So it, I realized it could really set the tone for my days, kind of no matter what was going on with my mom that day. 
So I feel fortunate that I figured that out at a really young age and I really carried that with me. So even when I was a lawyer, my husband and I were renovating and decorating the homes that we purchased. And then eventually I started a blog, kaleidoscopeliving.com to kind of just share these ideas and tips that I had with other people, because I, at the end of the day, I believe your home should make you happy. And if it's not, I think you need to fix that. So I shared doable DIY projects and interior design decor and tips. And yeah, I've also developed a signature design system called designer and a binder, which has helped like at this point over 9,000 people create spaces they love. So that's Mm -hmm. my passion. And that's why I'm so passionate about it. Uh I think it's funny. I believe the reason why when we were in like full lockdown mode, everybody was doing home renovation projects because we were confined in these spaces and realizing for a lot of us, certain spaces in our home really were not, they were adding to our (laughs) mental state if they weren't ones that brought us joy. Right. Yes. And I feel like not only should your home not, not add to your stress, it should really help alleviate it. It should, I I tell people, Mm -hmm. it finally occurred to me one day, in my opinion, everyone should walk in their home and it should feel like their home is kind of giving them a hug. Like it should feel like, oh, this is the place I want to be. This is the place where I can restore myself. And also, I always feel like it's important to say this. I feel like when I talk about like, oh, everyone should have a home they love. Some people get kind of defensive. They're like, well, I mean, I can't afford a, you know, a perfect home. That is not what I'm talking about. I think Every single home, every single home, whether it's a $50,000 home or a $5 million home, every single home has the potential to be exactly what you need it to be to give you the feelings that I'm talking about. And you don't have to spend a fortune to do it either. Oh, so true. I I think back to my first like non-roommate apartment living situation. Mm -hmm. And I was in a studio apartment. Yeah, It was 750 square feet. (laughs) And I loved that place because every little nook and cranny was for me. And it, it, again, this was not this magnificent masterpiece, but oh, and as soon as you said that, I was like, yeah, that I felt like I got a hug when I walked in there every day after work. Well, then you were nailing it. But I think a lot of people think, well, I'm not in a home that I love. This isn't what I would have chosen. You know, I was limited by my budget and they kind of give up before they even start. And I just, I don't, I think that could not be farther from the truth. Oh, so true. Now I, you know, I am obsessed with everything you do. Anyone (laughs) that follows Tasha on Instagram at Kaleidoscope Living, you just completed the most incredible upgrade, renovation, whatever we're going to call it to your front walkway or your entryway, including your staircase, the banisters, everything that involved like taking banisters apart, paint. I mean, all these things. Now I'm obsessed with this and I'm instantly going, what, what can I do in my home? But I also look at that and go, oh, Megan, you could never do that. Right. Um, One, just from a, how long it would take. Sure. And I worry about that. And then second, just that belief that I have to be a master carpenter or something along those lines. So I would love for you to share when you are tackling a large project, not, Mm -hmm. not just a, we're going to get me throw pillows for the couch project. How do you, because you have a lot going on, how do you plan and break down these projects so that you can actually get going on them. And you're not always stuck in that waiting for that weekend that you finally have time to do it. Yeah. I mean, it's such a great question. And I get asked a lot about, cause it's funny. I feel like that project took a while, but the reactions I hear from like, you know, readers of my blog or followers on social media is, wow, you got through that project so quickly. So it's really funny <laughs> to, to have those two different perspectives. But I think that for any big project, we ta- or honestly, even any small project, we break it down into bite-sized pieces. I'm sure this is something you share with your people all the time. You know, when you're just looking at a big project 
as a whole, it's going to feel real overwhelming, even for me. And I'm used to doing this stuff. So, I mean, the simplest way to do it is get out a pencil and paper and literally brain dump every single thing that has to happen for the project. So, you know, quick example for that project, we had to remove the old balusters. We wrote that down. We had to measure for and order new balusters. I mean, we literally just wrote it all down. And when we're doing an initial brain dump, I'm not even trying to put it in the correct order. I'm literally just like, (laughs) like, vomiting information onto a piece of paper. You don't have to to organize it just yet. And then what I would say we always do is we we then kind of reorder things like, okay, well, what has to happen first? Then what has to happen next? And you kind of slot things into an order that makes sense. And then before we start a project, I would say we have gotten much, much better over the years at making sure we have everything on hand to complete the project before we start. Okay. And I would say this is so important because there is nothing worse than having to interrupt your work and progress to go to the store or to order something that's not in stock. It is awful. Um, Especially now with the supply shortages. Holy cow. Yes. And so actually what you may or may not have noticed as we were tackling that project is we were originally going to tackle it like a month before we did. And we could not because the balusters, the new balusters that we ordered to replace the old ones were not in stock and they had to be fabricated. And so we kind of went back, we have a spreadsheet of kind of all the projects we want to, we want to tackle over the years. So then we looked, we said, well, we can't, we're stuck with this. Like we can't do anything about the balusters. What can we tackle in the meantime? And we also had on our list of things to do installing a board and batten wall treatment in our hallway. And so we just flip-flopped those two projects because board and batten, we knew we could get everything we needed at our local home improvement store. And so we just had to pivot. Hmm. Two things that you said, I think are real game changers. I think so many of us, particularly depending upon how your brain is wired, when we look at a project and we start to list it out, we think we have to get it in order right out of the gate. Oh no. And so then we get stuck because we're like, well, I don't know, which should I do first? And so then we're frozen. And so I love that you just said, no, literally just write it all down. Everything that you can, Mm -hmm. we're not organizing it yet. We're not scheduling it yet. And that alone will free up so much stress of what if I write it down in the wrong order? (laughs) Yes. Um, Don't even try. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And then (laughs) definitely the making sure everything's on hand. I'm thinking about our poor sweet neighbors who have been in a remodel now for 16 months, I think, because four months of it after the kitchen was gutted, Whoops, no cabinets, four months delay. Stop. The cabinets oh. get, yeah. I mean, it's just been one hit after another. And I'm like, oh yeah, that would have been a great thing to have thought about up front is make sure you have everything <laughs> before you start taking things apart. Yes, make sure you have everything. And you know, the the other thing about it is especially now we live near Greensboro, North Carolina, but we're in a town called Oak Ridge. And so we do have a Lowe's home improvement, you know, 15, 20 minutes away. But the bottom line is our access to stores like that is more limited than it used to be. And so this is another reason we kind of do the brain dump. We then, we then just try to put it in the order that we think it will or needs to unfold in. And then after we do that, we can kind of go back through each step each thing that needs to happen and make a list of everything that we need. And, you know, I can't say we always succeed in just one trip to the store, but usually we do because we can really, we can really think through everything we need. And that alone, just minimizing trips to the store is a huge, huge, huge time saver. There's nothing worse. This has happened to me where I'm getting ready to paint a room, right? I've done all the stuff, moved the furniture, done the painter's tape, all the things. 
you get everything out and then it's like, oh, I don't have the thing to pour the paint into, right? Like Uh I thought I had the inserts and I didn't, and you're ready, primed, ready to go. And it's like, oh, (laughs) yeah, stop everything and get back in the car. Yeah. It's the worst. And I, so I think it's really interesting because I think one of the reasons that as people, why I usually kind of share behind the scenes on my Instagram stories and Uh, you know, kind of walk people through a project as we're working on it. And so I think one of the reasons people perceive that it's moving quickly, where I don't necessarily think that is because I, it's really, I think for the simple reason that we have everything on hand before we actually quote break ground on a project, you know, I'm not ripping out balusters until I know I'm going to be then ready to paint the handrails and then ready to paint the new balusters and then install them because that would, you know, obviously significantly slow things down if you waited to complete a step before you purchased what you needed for the next one. So I think that that's probably the biggest reason it, it looks like our projects move smoothly and quickly. Mm. Now, how do you when you are laying out projects, how do you decide when to actually start one in terms of like looking at your calendar? Yeah. So this is something I'm actually going to go, I go into quite a bit of detail in my training session for Planapalooza, but I have, I have a whole system. Like it's, and it's really funny. It's one of those things that I didn't even realize was a system until people kept saying, well, how do you decide like what you're going to do? And I, it's, I mean, the, in a nutshell, it's that we evaluate what are, I call it our pain points, but that's really just a way of saying, Hey, what isn't working for us in this house? It can be purely aesthetics, but often it's, it's aesthetics and function. And Mm -hmm. so we kind of have this master list of like, Oh, what is not working in this house? And so each time, let's say we complete a project and we're, we're looking to what is our next big project going to be? We visit that list of like, what isn't working for us in this house? Then we also ask ourselves, well, what is our budget right now in real time? What is the amount we are comfortable spending without going into debt, without putting anything on credit cards? What can we spend right now? And what does our schedule look like? You know, do we have Mm -hmm. a bunch of free weekends coming up or is it busy because it's dance recital season? And then once we have evaluated those three pieces, we just, I call it find the overlap. We just look at where budget, time, and pain points intersect. And that's our next project. Oh, so the fact that you just said, the fact that you started with, I have a system <laughs> right, makes my heart so happy <laughs> because I know, you know, I have, I'm pretty good at when we start a project, like making, you know, looking at my calendar, making sure, yeah, we can tackle this and Mm -hmm. mapping it out. But oftentimes I'll look back and go, was that the best use of my time? Mm -hmm. This other thing is like, I've never really thought at looking at the house as a whole and really marrying all three of those parts together. So I am so excited that you are going to be doing a deep dive on that in Mm -hmm. Planapalooza because you know, we're, we're doing our annual planning for 2023. Well, I know there's some things that I'm wanting to do at the house here. And so knowing that I'm going to be able to marry that into my annual planning is just already reducing kind of some of the overthinking and stress that I have around this. So I am, I'm super, super excited, very selfishly (laughs) for your session coming into that. Well, good. (laughs) Now for, for those of us that look at some of your amazing projects, the baluster, et cetera, one, Mm -hmm. what are some tips that you could give to people that might look at something and say, well, I could never do that. Not from a budget, but from a skill set perspective. You know, it's, it's so funny because I think that people see what we do and think that we have like a ton of skills and I'm not, I mean, we've been doing this now, gosh, for so long. Yeah. We have acquired some skills, but truly most of the projects we do are suitable for beginners. And I think that it's the best advice I can give you is to do what we did, which is, I mean, try it, just try it. Like when I think about 
not so much, maybe the balusters would feel a bit overwhelming because we were cutting out iron balusters and replacing them with wood. And that had some nuance that a beginner may not be comfortable with, but my goodness, installing that stair runner ourselves could not be easier. I mean, you can go buy like a $14 staple gun and some stair runners and install it yourself. I think that the key is to be willing to try it and make a mistake. That's Mm -hmm. neither of us have any, we didn't, you know, it's not like we had carpenter or woodworking parents. We, we didn't have a background (laughs) in anything. And so when we started DIYing, it was when we first got married, we were 24. We bought our first house almost right away. And I said, gosh, I feel like we're, we're still sleeping on like a metal bed frame. Like we're in college. Like maybe we should have some bedroom furniture. Right. (laughs) (laughs) And we started, we started shopping for furniture and we had some severe sticker shock. And my husband said, uh, no, we're not, (laughs) we're not buying bedroom furniture. I think we could build some. And I, I mean, so I had the same experience that many people do when he said that, which is we can't build furniture. Are you kidding me? Like, that's hard. And he said, I just, let's just try it. And if we really, if it turns out horribly, we will buy furniture. And so we built a headboard and side tables. And there's such a world of information between blogs out there and YouTube, and you would be shocked at what you can accomplish with the most basic tools. Like our first real tool was a circular saw. Y'all, they are inexpensive and they are not hard to use, but we went into it literally with the agreement, we'll try this. And if it doesn't work, we'll buy something. We were just willing to try it. We were just willing to try it. It's that simple. I love that you say that. And this is why I I really like when I look at your finished project, your latest one, that's just absolutely stunning. (laughs) If I were to just see the before and after, I would say, no way could I do that. But you share all the step-by-step. And so as I'm seeing what you're doing, I'm kind of like, oh, well, I I could probably do that. Oh yeah. Maybe I could do that. Mm -hmm. And so I so appreciate that you give us such in-depth behind the scenes of so much, basically everything that you're doing, because I feel like that has helped build my confidence looking around at some things. Maybe I want to tackle now that I'm like, well, I could, I could probably give this a go. Yeah. Well, (laughs) yeah. I, and I would say I, I try to be very, so let me ask you this in closing here, Tasha, because we're going to have plan a Palooza coming for everyone to be learning all things, amazingness from you. Where is the best place that people can follow you, start seeing what projects that you're working on right now. So the best place on social media, and it really is where I kind of share the the behind the scenes is going to be Instagram. So I am at Tasha.Kaleidoscope on Instagram. But if what you want to find is all the projects I've done and really all the the decor and DIY resources, you're going to find that at Kaleidoscopeliving.com. And I will drop both of those in the show notes so you guys can go ahead and trust me. He will become as obsessed as I am (laughs) with seeing everything that Tasha has going on. Thank you so, so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, Megan. It's always a pleasure. Getting on top of all things time management, organization, and productivity doesn't have to stop just because this episode is over. If you want one tap access to all of my training and current top podcasts, go to the App Store or Google Play and download the Pink Bee app. It's one word, the Pink Bee. It is jam-packed with simple yet powerful tips and strategies to get you out of overwhelm and into harmony. And if you have a question you want me to cover on a future episode, go to iTunes and ask your question in the podcast review section. And while you're there, don't forget to leave a five-star review.